Hi, my name is Darren Moore and I'm Group Commercial Director at Tax Assist Accountants um, and welcome to the latest of our video updates on COVID-19. Quick bit of background first, Tax Assist Accountants are a, a network of accountants across the UK and we represent almost 400 locations and about 77,000 clients, most of whom are small businesses. And my job is really to support that network and to help them deal with some of the challenges we've, we've seen during COVID-19. Topic for today is the Chancellor's Summer Economic Update. Really interesting update, lots there for us to digest. So I just wanted to run through the main headings really with you, not too much detail, but just the headings of things you need to be aware of. I'm gonna break it down into three sections because really it was about jobs, it was about particular sectors, and it was about the property market. So I'm gonna give you a quick uh, review of the things I think are important in each of those areas. So let's start with jobs and let's start with plans there to try to protect and create and that's what the chancellor is really trying to do here he's obviously worried about the impact of the eight plus million people currently on furloughing and what happens when the scheme unwinds and he started really by talking about that scheme and how it would unwind because there has been some speculation about what might happen so he talked about the end of a scheme at end of october which is what we understood but he's just made it clear but it's still his expectation that the scheme will stop at that stage which we know will be disappointing for some. There was some hope that that may continue, but he did go on to talk about at least some additional monies for employers in what's called a jobs retention bonus scheme. Now the bonus scheme will kick in um, for those employees that are retained until the end of January, 2021, who have been previously furloughed. And as we understand it, that's furloughed at any stage through the furloughing scheme being in existence. And he talked about uh, a thousand pound bonus per employee being payable for those that meet that criteria. Now, employees must receive at least 520 pounds per month on average, so equivalent to lower earnings limit of national insurance in that period, but that will be at least some good news for those that are worried about the furloughing scheme and how that will unwind. On the job side, he then went on to talk about two new schemes or adapted schemes to try to encourage more employment, particularly of younger people. So we started by talking about what was called the Kickstart Scheme, which is a new scheme which is designed to support those in the uh, age brackets of 16 to 24 who are currently on universal credit or at risk of long-term unemployment. We don't know the full details, but what we do know is that the funding will cover 25 hours a week up to national minimum wage, plus associated national insurance and pension costs. So quite a significant scheme really for those looking to take on more staff, younger staff. And alongside that, he talked about an extension of the current apprenticeship scheme. Now that's already there for those in the 16 to 18 year old bracket and for some aged over 25 and it's a thousand pounds payment cash bonus if you like at the moment already payable in addition to that from the 1st of august there will be a new scheme for apprentices um, in the 16 to 24 age range where there'll be an additional two thousand pound cash bonus for employers and 1500 pounds for apprentices who are aged 25 uh, or above so again, some good news there for those who have apprentices and are or looking to extend and get more apprentices into their business. So um, some good news there on the job side, um, but still a lot to understand, of course, in terms of the true impact of what's happening and what will happen. He then moved on to sectors and he focused specifically on the hospitality and tourism sector. Now that's because that sector has been probably the hardest hit in the UK so far. 1.4 million workers in that sector are already furloughed and lots of concern about um, how demand will improve over time. So he brought in two key measures really that are designed to stimulate that demand and to help drive people back into those businesses to create revenue. First of which is VAT. So uh, there will be a VAT cut um, imminently that will run through to uh, 12th of January 2021 and that's reducing VAT on those relevant tourism and hospitality related activities from 20% to 5%. So quite a significant reduction. And that's a four billion pound fund in the chances eyes really. There are some questions about how it will work. We're still waiting for details. The relevance for businesses is probably how they implement that because it will mean their systems will need to bring in that new VAT rate. If they are providing mixed supply, so some at 5%, some at 20%, they'll need to think about how that works. And they'll need to think about their pricing as well, because the intention was for these savings to be passed on to the consumer. But it may be that some businesses decide they want to keep some of that additional margin, if you like, themselves to try and help improve their businesses. So we'll see what the detail is there, but there's an opportunity perhaps for businesses, but they, they probably need to engage with their accountants to help them get up to speed 
in terms of how they bring those changes in and how they update their systems. But quite an interesting one. Um, alongside that, even more interesting was a completely new scheme called the Eat Out to Help Out discount. Now that's an unusual one for the government in this is direct intervention in consumer demand because what they're going to be doing in, in August is they will be subsidizing people's costs of eating out. So they'll be offering a discount of up to 50%, so a maximum of 10 pounds per head for adults and children on people eating out on Mondays through Wednesdays throughout August. So again, quite a significant scheme, quite an unusual scheme. For those businesses in that sector, they will need to look at the details and they need to register. There will be a registration process so they can participate. So more information needed on that. So we'll keep you up to speed as that comes out. The third sector supported was the property sector. And, and the reason being, it's a hugely important sector in the UK, a significant part of our economy. And there is concern over demand for property and what that means for the building trade and for everyone connected to it. So there is there are two incentives there that are new that are worth talking about. And the first of which is, is stamp duty. Now, um, stamp duty at the moment works on all property transactions above 125,000. And there's at least 2% stamp duty payable. With effect immediately, that threshold is going to be raised to 500,000. And that uh, increase will apply through to 31st of March, 2021. So that should mean that about 90% of movers pay nothing at all in stamp duty. So it's a, it's a big change for the property market. That should provide a big boost. Um, We'll see again how the rules apply, but on the face of it, that will be great news for a number of people out there who are looking at selling or buying property. Alongside that was some specific intervention around some, some green agendas, some environmental agendas, and that was done through the introduction of what they're calling Green Homes Grants. So those grants are a two billion pound pot, so quite a significant pot of money, and it's designed to support uh, property improvement schemes, so energy efficiency improvements in properties, and they will support two thirds of the cost up to £5,000. So again, quite significant for the property market, but particularly important for those that are in the supply chain uh, of that energy efficient sector, because that supports an awful lot of jobs in local communities. So quite uh, quite a significant intervention there. So they were the main headlines. Um, important to note that I've just given you just a quick overview. There's a lot more detail beneath that, some of which is known and a lot of which I think will still come out. What we will do is make sure that we keep our clients uh, and the market informed of those changes. We'll do that through our website. So please do visit that, www.taxis.co.uk. And if you do want to talk to us, we do offer free consultations, free virtual meetings for anyone who would like to understand how we can help them. So you'll see details of that on our website. So please do contact us. So I hope that's been of help. I hope that's a useful run through. Do look out for more videos as we come into uh, a bit more detail of these schemes. And thank you for your time.